Hey guys, Vision back again with a war recap from PB's Punishers, where today we took away a 70 to 57 win over Walua Bajarang. Um, a bit of an unbalanced war. Uh, as you can see, our clan level is level 9 versus their 6. Um, so, um, good war to the guys there, but unfortunately they were um, up against it. Despite the fact that the breakdown really hit, was in their favour in terms of the Town Hall level, um, they were really unfortunate in that they were rushed Town Halls. So what I wanted to do today was look at three of the hits from our war and sort of highlight the reasons other than the obvious, for not rushing your town hall. And how, if you are up against either engineers or people that have rushed, how you can exploit that to your benefit. So let's have a quick look at the map here. Uh, we're going to roll down on the enemy side, and I'm going to start with Diesel's hit. Uh, I'm not biased at all as to who's show, whose hit's getting shown, I promise. Uh, versus the number 19, Apanjul Khan. So let's go in on the replay here and let's have a look at what we've brought in. So I'm going to pause that straight out. Straight out. So this was versus a Town Hall 8. So I'm thinking I'm looking at the wrong one. So I'm going to back out. Because I do remember hitting a Town Hall 9. So let's drop down to 18, which is the one I want to be showing. I'm super professional, so I'm going to carry on like nothing happened. Alright, let's have a look at this space. This space was not a fresh hit. Um, that I did, but I adjusted the plan with a very similar troop composition um, to attack from a slightly different angle. The initial hit came in from the 12 to 3. So if we pause this up here, uh, so he came in on this army camp, um, which was not ideal as far as drawing CC and how that was going to go. Um, it soaked up a lot more time. So what I've chosen to do is drop two archers down here at the exposed sweeper and the exposed air defense, uh, basically to free up pathing so that my hogs, when they come in, are not going to be stuck on those and nothing's going to be drawn to them. I've dropped one wizard behind a golem at this outside archer tower. Um, easily accessible, easily tanked. Uh, once that goes down, I'm going to have a second golem come in and we're going to have that shattered entry uh, with, once the funnel's developed, the bowlers in the CC. So let's go in and follow through this. <coughs> Apologies. So there it is, uh, the two golems in, and we're just setting that funnel now with the wizards. Uh, unfortunately, they lost a bit of tanking here with that uh, on that archer tower, so we're going to lose some wizards here. So a couple of wall breakers coming in after that first set, and king and bowlers will come in behind. So double poisons for that CC, and the wizards are raged along with the bowlers and the troops coming in through the middle here. Bowlers decide to take a walk, which is a little unfortunate, it was not the plan. Uh, but with all of the damage that is going into the center there that you can see, uh, it was not really a big deal. So I dropped a heal in the center to keep everything alive while we kill through there and let the bowlers walk. Hogs start to come in, and obviously we've got a couple of Teslas which are getting dealt to by both the Hogs and the Bowlers. And what I aimed to do here was bring in the Hogs pretty systematically through uh, and let everything make its way around nicely from the clockwise direction. So once this happens, we can see a few storages here which are going to slow up those Bowlers, and I have four Goblins in the camps, and they'll be coming down very shortly to help move through that. So everything's doing good damage through there, uh, no issues for health for the hogs. Goblins in just to do uh, a lot of work on those elixir storages and collect and gold storages and the collectors. Um, and at this point, everything is wrecked and everything's going to converge through in this uh, 9 to 10 o'clock, sort of 10 o'clock region. Um, everything's moving around quite nicely and this is basically wrecked. So uh, no trouble there. Even though it was a Town Hall 9, had a few extra bits and pieces, the way the layout was hadn't been adjusted suitably. So what you need to do when you upgrade your base, upgrade your Town Hall, and add new buildings, is make sure you redesign your base. Don't look and expect that a Town Hall 8 base with a few extra bits tacked to the outside is going to defend and perform as well as a Town Hall 9 designed base. So you really need to be pretty uh, onto it with that and... 
honestly in most cases if you're adding new buildings scrap your base even if it performed well at town hall 8 and redesign you can use uh, good principles and design well uh, and it will perform a lot better especially if you have rushed so we're going to back out into the map here and i do believe ren hit 16 here and this uh, mr uki way I don't know how to say it properly, so I will not. Uh, as you see, it's a rushed Town Hall 10. Like, super rushed. I'm not even talking just like rushed. Uh, but Ren being a Town Hall 8, just even then, hits like an absolute freight train. Uh, this was a brilliant hit. Um, unfortunate start, in my opinion. I was a little stressed at the start, but as you can see why, um, it's amazing. You can see they've got uh, four quakes coming in on this composition and he's dropped a hog in because it's an easy cc pull and at that point a cc kill and he's gone with a quad quake which surprised me given the troop composition that he has um but you'll see how this works for him and why the hogs are how they are and how this is going to work so let's play this out he's pulled the cc pretty comfortably um, as you can see, we've got the drag, baby drag combo. Not a composition I like um, because it seems to not really make the most of that baby drag's rage. Um, it can work when he outruns the dragon like he has now, but generally you're going to have him catching up, so it's not going to be a thing. No poisons for the CC. So he's dropped barbs in and he's going to continually feed those barbs uh, to hopefully distract those troops and let him kill them off. Uh, it was a little bit of a struggle here. And he ran out of feeder troops, so he had to adjust um, and drop very carefully. So he's dropped some of his tanking, um, which is going to take a little bit more heat. And then he's got wizards behind to help take out those troops. So it means he is going to sacrifice that tanking a lot sooner than he'd like. But he has the king come in behind just to protect that wizard if he loses that tank. And there we have the funnel being developed. Warbreakers going in and has decided to enter at the expos and quad quake straight through the center and you'll see valks get dropped behind and cc valks as well so some seriously tanky valks running through there and that's actually going to make the most part uh the main part of his kill squad really to actually run through this base so you can see it's taking out all of the main things and they've actually those little runways to the side and channels have helped him push to the center to get that town hall He's got a heal on the Valks, and now he's bringing in the Hogs, um, pretty systematically moving their way around. And the Valks are going to do the bulk of it with those low-level walls. They don't have much to worry about. And the last of the Hogs are coming in now, and he's got a minion for that bomb tower. So pretty comfortable. Uh, everything's just going to slowly work its way around and take out anything that's going to hassle him. So we're going to two times that. Um, as you can see, a really solid hit. A Town Hall 8 versus a Town Hall 10 rushed. Um, so if anyone says don't bother investing in walls, show them this and say, yeah, you definitely want to be investing in walls. Those Valkyries just carve through them and it is not an issue at this point. So there we have it. It's going to finish up four times on the Builder Hut up top. And there wasn't even it wasn't even looking like failing. Um, amazing adjustment early to have to sacrifice that tank in order to kill the CC, but that was to make the most of all the other troops running around that base because there was a lot of ground to cover. So a really good adjustment uh, when he lost his feeder barbs. All right, so we're going to go to our third hit here. Um, and this is a 10v10 triple uh, where Conundrum, or Ken, uh, took on Panjul Arab. So let, uh, let us have a look here. I'm going to pause it really quickly. Again, you can see low walls. So easy enough to punch through, not an issue to get right through into that core. Uh, one single target Inferno. A mix of levels on the Expos. And it's not even max defense. It's a really um, odd assortment of defense levels. Um, so the difference being this is somewhat a near max 10 that we're looking at. Level 40 queen. 
uh, on our side going up against a rushed 10. So I really liked this hit. And first thing I want to do is have a quick look at the base. Um, pretty obvious positions for spring traps um, would be these open spots in the walls. Uh, other things to note for this is running around here with the pathing, if you have hogs, which Ken does, is they're not really going to be troubled by a lot of those spots because they can sort of bounce their way through here uh, and pathing can fav favor zipping in and out and missing a lot of spring traps initially. Um, so it's not going to stop them killing defenses, but it may slow down cleanup. The other thing to look for is the fact that the CC is easily uh, pullable if you want to, and the queen is easy enough to hero swap or even uh, just drop, say, a couple of Valks straight onto her and they will take out a low level queen very quickly. So I think that might be what he does here. So let's go through and see what happens. Alright, I think the entry is going to come up on this side just to take care of the heroes so they're not an issue uh, later on in the raid. Alright, so there's a giant. It triggers a giant bomb. And there you go. A couple of Valkyries just taking on the heroes at this point. So they do a big chunk of damage on that king. And they've taken out the queen. So from here we're going to have a big tanky golem coming in on the outside with wizards to set the funnel. The second golem comes in. He's pathing to that same point. Pre-poison for that CC. Just to slow everything down and let him get his entry. Um, he's going to have to wait for any wall break, uh, which he may not even need to do, uh, because there is splash damage there, and those bowlers take a hit from a giant bomb. But that jump has got the tanking into the center. And Queen should redirect here if we're lucky, which she does, and she takes that jump into the core. So I'm going to pause that and have a look where he's dropped the rage uh, with that main set of troops in the middle. Uh, in order to get maximum value killing that um, entire course. There's a lot of damage there, but there's so much tanking going on. And here's where it gets different. There is a single target Inferno who is going to be slightly distracted here, uh, but it is going to roast anything despite the hit points. Uh, he still has Queen with ability here. She's going to move into range of that Expo and that Inferno in just a moment. He's popped the ability, and we'll see where she gets to. But so many hogs coming in from the top there. Uh, just overwhelming that with a single target inferno um, mass troops is your friend so that heal spell while it doesn't work on um, troops that are being targeted by the inferno because it's a single target um, the rest of those troops are going to be benefiting from that spell so he's hitting a couple of spring traps here on the way round um, for cleanup but on that initial kill of those defenses that wasn't an issue so now it is just a matter of cleanup and there's no problem so clean up minion to the top he's going to absorb a bomb there unfortunately but everything else uh, just too many troops so we're going to speed this up so just an incredible incredible piece of base identification um, and just setting those troop sets i mean those valkyries that were in the camps were there for one reason only and that is to take out that hero that queen in the first place so it's not about just here's an army composition that works it was about looking at the base seeing what could be done there was a lot of tightly packed defenses um, and very easy jump straight to the core as well and the hero was accessible for a swap for the price of two valkyries um, so really really good spotting um, an incredible execution so really cool to see so um, a 10v10 triple for the war um, really good work and just great fun to watch so we do have another war that we have already spun so let's have a quick look see uh, versus brothers blood so looking forward to that tomorrow um, and look at that I'm even in the war so um, We'll see how that goes. But until next time, have fun, keep clashing, and uh, hey, don't stress, it's all good fun, right? Cool, see you next time.